Today, we are diving into how small and medium-sized enterprises can leverage AI, manage their data effectively, and gain a competitive edge in today's rapidly evolving digital landscape. From young, I was always interested in building and designing things. I started from building the little game when I was in high school, actually, and then I ended up studying computer science for my bachelor's, and then I was lucky enough to understand the market trends and study computer science specialization of AI back in 2016. Many businesses have a wealth of untapped data that can drive actionable insights. Some say SMBs are sitting on a gold with the data they've been collecting for years. What exactly do you mean by that? I think this is a, a definitely a gold mine that every company has been sitting on. Depending on how many years you've been in, in operation in business, you've been collecting data. It could yeah. be customer service, it could be your website analytics, it could be all interactions that you've been receiving from your users. Hello there, small business owners. Are you curious about leveraging AI for your company? Remember, you might have unique advantages over large competitors focus on practical applications and smart strategies. Hi, this is Kripa Anand and welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, where we explore the transformative power of artificial intelligence and its practical applications for businesses of all sizes. Today, we're diving into how small and medium-sized enterprises can leverage AI, manage their data effectively, and gain a competitive edge in today's rapidly evolving digital landscape. Now, recent trends highlight the widespread adoption of AI but also the unique challenges and advantages that SMBs face compared to larger enterprises. This discussion today will provide valuable insights into where to start, how to mitigate risks, and how to make scalable AI decisions. Joining us today is Sadra Shakuhi, co-founder and CTO of HashThink, a company specializing in AI solutions for SMBs across education, marketing, law, and recruitment, and powering multiple startups and partnerships. So let's dive in the episode. Firstly, Sadra, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm pretty well. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Now, let's start by the origin story of HashThink, right? Building a successful company often starts with a spark of curiosity and a desire to solve real-world problems. Please go ahead and share a bit about your journey, you know, from writing a programming research paper in 2013 to ultimately co-founding HashThink. What inspired you to building a company focused on AI solutions for SMBs? Well, uh, from young, I was always interested in uh, building and designing things. Mm -hmm. uh, I started from uh, building the little game when I was in, in, in high school, actually. Right. And then I, I, I ended up studying computer science for my bachelor's. And then I was lucky enough to understand the market trends and study com uh, computer, computer science specialized in specialization of AI mm -hmm. uh, back in 2016. Wow. So, uh, and then uh, I spent years of programming and coding and working for enterprise um, companies uh, in various different com uh, countries and companies. Um, and um, it was back in 2018 that I realized um, I wish to add a lot of automation into what's out there right now. So right. even though we did not have a lot of AI back then, yeah. I wanted to add a lot of um, live, a lot of streaming processes. So you were always way ahead of your time. Uh, I was lucky enough. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So did you always wanted to become uh, an entrepreneur and you know, start something of your own, or was it something that came along the way? It was it was from day one. It was from the moment I started com studying computer science. Right. I always wanted to like not deprive myself into coding and just building. I wanted to understand the business side of it and how we can utilize technology into solving actual business problems. That's a very fascinating origin story. Now, adopting AI, you know, brings its own unique challenges depending on a company's size and structure. What do you think are, you know, on the contrary, the biggest advantages that small businesses have over big enterprises when it comes to adopting AI? One word, velocity. Wow. <laughs> well, big enterprises are, everything takes time with them. Obviously, yeah. obviously they, have, they have more budget. They have a lot of more connections and right. they can uh, do things a bit better in long term. Yeah. But smaller companies have an, have an advantage of uh, quicker velocity, decision making. Quicker decision making yeah. and also like, uh, being able to like quickly hop on smaller problems and, and solve them mm -hmm. and tap into niche industries, something that bigger companies and enterprises are not able to do, obviously. Very interesting. Now, if, if 
these were the advantages of SMBs versus large enterprises. But if you, if we have to concentrate on the challenges that SMBs only face in adopting AI, what would they be? Well, I would say the major challenge is um, SMBs would really have hurdles and have troubles um, revolutionizing specific industries as a whole. Right. Something that enterprises and bigger companies will be able to do, right? Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, Google will be able to launch an application that revolutionizes how video making is done and yeah. they use AI. Mm -hmm. But if a small, if a, if a SMB wishes to develop an AI for, for videos, it would have to compete with an, with an enterprise like that. But if a smaller company mm -hmm. or an SMB focuses on solving, on creating specific AI videos for a specific industry right. and solve a niche problem, that would probably put them in a in a safer position uh, as opposed to like solving a big industry uh, problem. No, that's a very fair comparison because, you know, as AI becomes more accessible, uh, the prospect in the beginning, especially, it can feel a lot daunting. Uh, but yes, if you are focusing on a specific niche only, then you have a bigger chance to make it in that specific field. Hello there, small business owners. Are you curious about leveraging AI for your company? Remember, you might have unique advantages over large competitors. Focus on practical applications and smart strategies. But let's get back to our conversation with Sadra and explore how to get started with AI. Now, as AI becomes more accessible, businesses are eager to you know, incorporate it into their operations and it's no longer a buzzword. It's here and very much, it's a part of everyday uh, routine, right? For an SMB with no AI experience, where should they start from? You know, what's that one thing that you recommend that they should do to start their journey with AI? I would say look at it from two different angles. Okay. One is, what are the most um, um, time-consuming tasks in your operation today? Hmm. When it comes to, it could be sale, it could be operation, it could be anything that you're dealing with right now. Right. It could be over your retention strategy, your churn rate. What is it you're spending your most of your time on mm. and which is your main pain point? Right. Listing them down and prioritizing them and looking at what are the solutions out there with it as opposed to like um, starting to build a solution against it because right. we have already surpassed the era of me having to build everything that I want. Right. Hmm, very interesting. But... Where do you think, because since AI is literally everywhere, sometimes what business owners do is they try to overuse it. So if you want to highlight a part where AI should not and, you know, be a part of it, what would you say? Well, I would say we are still, even though, I mean, despite all the great developments that has been happening and advancements in the past couple of years, uh, again, people like me and many other people, I'm sure, in the audience have been in AI for 10, 15 years. Yeah. Um Still, the industry and the public are not ready to completely go hands off. So we still need to retain a degree of human in the loop right. to make sure we can achieve our, our goals. So even though AI may be able to like achieve a lot and may, may be able to like completely automate certain processes, we need to still maintain some sort of human in the loop to ensure it is done properly and it is guided and it is walked through as there's our clients who are human as well. So it's completely subjective to the industry you're, and the problem you're solving. So I would say one is be careful. Don't automate all one day and right. and re remove completely human from the loop. Right. So if I were to give you a time machine right now and say you were to go 20 years into the future, do you think this AI automation process will eventually take out the humans out of it? And do you think uh, that would work or that is something that you know will take the personal touch out of it and... Something like sales especially, what, what do you have to say about it? Well, converse of many other people out there who say, oh, we are going to create new jobs and it's going to be completely replacing with what yeah. we have and we are not going to face joblessness. I believe we are going to face a huge joblessness. And that's the truth. We've got to face it. Right. Um, it's pretty hard to predict the next 20 years. Well, let's talk about the next couple. Uh, in the next couple of years, I would say we're going to be witnessing some massive changes and evaporation of certain industries and certain companies that have been existing for years and years and years. So what's really important is understanding what the, what the trend is and try to follow the flow to not get left behind. Because at the end of the day, you would need to use AI. Right. Don't get us wrong. We're not here saying you have to build AI, but you need to use AI to not go irrelevant. Very interesting. All right, it's time for a quick break right here. But when we return, we'll explore how SMBs can tap into valuable data they've already collected to fuel AI insights. 
Hey, you think you know UPS? Yeah, that's us. Everybody knows that. You know what you didn't know? This. Okay, try to keep up. Ocean, us. Ground, rail, air, so us. Guess who? Us. Customs cleared, borders cleared, done. Us, us. You still with me? Wait for it. Boom. Us. Intelligent, automated, fulfillment. Us. Yep, healthcare too. Digital your thing? Yeah, well, book it, ship it, track it. You feeling me yet? Yep, that's all us. That's all UPS. Welcome back, listeners. Let's dive into how SMBs can turn the wealth of data they've already gathered into valuable AI insights to drive smarter decision making and growth. Now, Saltra, many businesses have a wealth of you know untapped data that can drive actionable insights. Some say SMBs are sitting on a gold with you know the data they've been collecting for years. What exactly do you mean by that? And you know what kind of existing data, like old sales log- logs and you know support tickets or feedback, should they look at first to dro- to drive AI insights? Definitely, um, I think this is a, a definitely a, a gold mine that every company has been sitting on. Right. Depending on how many years you have been in operation and in business. Um, you've been collecting data. It could yeah. be customer service. It could be your website analytics. It could be all interactions that you have been receiving from your uh, from your users, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, it could be for five years you've been receiving all that data that can be compartmentalized, categorized, and identified for different purposes. Before the um, expansion of AI of today, the LLMs of the right. today, uh, we were really limited on what we could utilize, and we had to get we had to make sense of data through human interaction and intervention. Right. But today, with the power of AI, we have been specifically helping a lot of companies to make sense of huge amount of data they have been collecting for years. It could be making sense of all your customer interactions, all the tickets you have been receiving for years, all the um, sales processes you have been going through, all the um, website analytics, all the traffic, the activity, and the flow of the users interacting with your website. You can make sense of that Mm -hmm. and allow AI to suggest you what you should be doing next for retention strategy and acquisition strategy. That's a very empowering idea, and it means that you know businesses don't need to start from scratch. They already have a valuable assets, you know, waiting for them to be unlocked. Uh, Sadhwa, now let's dive into how SMBs can start future-proofing their systems by leveraging the right technology and staying ahead of the curve. As businesses look to future-proof their operations, the integration of AI plays a crucial role in enhancing efficiency. What does the actual process look like when you know integrating AI into small business workflows? And do you, like does small businesses need a custom tech stack, or can they effectively use you know off-the-shelf tools out there? Uh, please suggest on that. And also, are there any current AI trends that you are seeing amongst SMBs that you're keeping an eye on? Sure. Well, there. Let me answer from starting from your last question. Yeah. So um, there's certain quite industry agnostic things that every every SMB has to deal with. Right. There is customer service, there is certain content generation and certain, certain other activities that is quite common within all companies. So disregarding the industry you're in, you need to utilize those. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of tools and applications today that are off the shelf, can be utilized, and plugged and play. I would like to choose my words quite carefully here. Um, plugged and play is quite important because you need to understand how what kind of data you need to feed certain right. systems to be able to draw the best conclusion. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say we are walking towards a plug and play off the shelf utilization of tools that are understood and comprehended by AI and data experts in order for your business to utilize them the best way. Because at the end of the day, data is the key to define. We don't have, it doesn't work one size fits all. It's not a scenario in this case. So based on your scenarios, based on your use cases, based on your specific data, it has to to be tailored. A term that everybody I think has been hearing these days, prompt engineering. So it has to be prompt engineered and tailored and catered for specific scenarios of yours in order to draw the best conclusion and do the best results. That makes sense. And it also provides a clear roadmap of, you know, AI integration, uh, balancing custom solutions with accessible tools. And also I think staying aware 
of the current trends is also the biggest thing that you should be aware of because uh, a lot of people they don't do their research well and doing your homework solves a lot of the major problems right uh, to conclude sadra if there's one piece of final advice that you'd like to leave with the listeners uh just to summarize the entire conversation that we had today what would it be and why it might be overwhelming to say that but keep it up keep up with the with the market trends right. keep up with the up, with the updates of the industry if you wish to stay ahead of the game you need to be ahead of the game you need to read ahead of the game look up what bigger companies are doing look be very specific in your industry right. and find out the tools that are available it's time everybody's gold in mind we need sharpened shovels so sharpen your shovel borrow more shovels right it's it has never been this uh volatile ever mm. the velocity of changes is right. overwhelming i understand i've never seen in the past yeah. 12 13 years i've been relevant yeah. so uh just keep it up and only people win who stay relevant that's a million dollar advice and also finally if you wanted to warn all the listeners about you know one random mistake that you keep seeing happening over and over again what is it building before interviewing the target audience Hmm. Do not assume. Yeah. Assumption assume. kills. Ask them, verify them, validate them, and then build. Amazing. That was Sadra for you guys. Thank you so much for being on this episode. It was Thanks an absolute pleasure. Appreciate. It. Thank you. All right. That was an insightful conversation with Sadra Shakuhi, co-founder and CTO of Hashthink, on the unique advantages and challenges of AI adoption for small businesses, the power of leveraging existing data, and practical strategies for building AI-enabled systems. Hashthink is providing AI solutions that help SMEs grow and scale. So thank you so much for tuning in to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. We really appreciate your continued support. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more expert insights and resources that can help your business thrive. Also, don't forget to visit our website canadiansme.ca. And lastly, a very special thank you to our podcast partners, RBC, UPS, A1 Global College, and Google for their ongoing commitment to empowering small businesses. Until next time, Keep innovating and striving for success, and we'll see you in the next episode. Kripa Anand signing off.